Good day, Grade 7 learners, and welcome to Tuma Mina Teaching. My name is Gabrielle Duval, and today I will be taking you through the financial literacy part of EMS. This will be your first lesson in a series of five videos for EMS Grade 7 Term 2. So as you can see, we have a lot of ground to cover. So grab your pen and your EMS workbook and let's get down to business. This is your first time dealing with financial literacy. In high school, you will delve even deeper into the subject. And that's why it's so important that you understand the core concepts well in grade seven. In today's lesson, we are going to look at all the basic accounting concepts. Before we start with all these different concepts, I'd like to introduce you to Cyril. Cyril has wanted to open up a hairdressing salon since he was 16. He studied hairdressing at the local college and finally made his dream come true at the age of 21. However, he wouldn't have been able to pull it off if it weren't for other role players in his life. But more about that later. He decided to name his salon Cyril Swag Salon or CSS for short. He believes that everyone who walks out of his salon should feel good about themselves. They should have a little bit of swag. During this video series, we are going to journey with Cyril and his business and see how his business develops, grows and faces big challenges. Before we can understand all the different accounting concepts, we have to understand what the word accounting means. Accounting is the process of record keeping, interpretation and then communication of economic information. This overview helps businesses make better decisions for their business and more specifically, make better financial decisions. So basically, accounting has to do with all the components of the business where money is involved. This financial information is very important and that is why a record of it should always be kept. The record keeping of this is at the heart of accounting. Let's take a look at our first concept, capital. As you know, one needs money to start a business. Capital is the amount of money the owner uses to start his business. We can think of this as the money the owner lends to the business. However, the money remains the owner's property. So if he decides to sell his business, he will get his money back. If the business was profitable, he will receive his money back as well as a profit. However, he also takes a risk. If his business were to go bankrupt, he will lose all the money that he gave to his business as capital contribution. That is why it is high risk to start a business. Being an entrepreneur takes a lot of courage. So back to Cyril. As you know, Cyril started his own salon. He invested 40,000 Rand into Cyril Swag Salon. We call this 40,000 Rand his capital contribution. Next up is assets. Assets are anything that adds value to the business. So that the business can function better and make more money. Think of it this way. Who of you have a bike? What do you use it for? You use it to go to your friend's house or to school, right? This bike can be seen as an asset because it's something that you own. It adds value. It gets you from point A to point B faster. And it makes you happy because you get to see your friends. Remember, we said assets add value, just like your bike. There are two different types of assets. You get fixed assets, which are called non-current or tangible assets, and you get current assets. Fixed assets are assets whose life expectancy is longer than a year. In other words, the possession should last longer than a year. An example of this would be if Cyril buys a building for the salon where he operates the business from, rather than renting a building from someone else. The building will then be a fixed asset. Can you think of more examples of fixed assets? Ask your teacher to pause this video and discuss this together and see if you can come up with even more examples. If you're watching this video at home, try to write down at least two examples. In the description below, there's a link to a workbook that you can download. have thought of this or this or maybe even this. Current assets are assets whose life expectancy is shorter than a year and it can very easily be converted into cash 
or is cash itself. Examples of this is petty cash or the cash itself. Next up are liabilities. So let's go back to Sir Olgin. Remember, he started off with 40,000 Rand capital contribution. But what if that wasn't enough? What if he needed more money? What does he do now? So quickly chat to your friend and see if you can come up with a solution for Cyril's problem. Raise your hand if your answer was to borrow money. Well done. If Cyril does not have enough money, he will need to borrow this money. Now, there are many different places where he could borrow this money, but it's very important that he borrows it from a registered credit provider and not just anyone. So that's why his safest option is the bank. Usually, such a loan will be repaid over a number of years. Therefore, you call a loan a long-term liability or a non-current liability. Other examples of long-term liabilities are mortgage loans. This is a loan taken out on property. Just as you get long-term liabilities, you also get short-term liabilities or current liabilities. These liabilities have to be repaid over a short amount of time. Examples of these are bank overdraft facilities and creditors, but more about this later. The next concept that we will discuss is income. Now, I believe that you already know what income is, but just to make sure, pause the video and discuss this with your friend next to you. Think about it this way. The word income actually explains what it is. It is when money comes in to your business. When a business sells goods or services, they expect that they will receive money in exchange for these goods and services. We call this money that they receive income. There are other ways for a business to receive extra income. They could rent out a part of their building. We call this income rental income. What do you think is Cyril Swag Salon's main source of income? Stop this video, raise your hand and give your teacher your answer. Yes, you are correct by cutting, styling and colouring people's hair. So let's move on to expenses. So while income is the money that flows into the business, expenses is money that flows out of the business. Expenses is therefore money that the business pays to others for services, consumables, water and electricity. Basically anything to keep the business running on a daily basis. Cyril Swag Salon also has many expenses. He has to pay the salary of the hairdresser that works for him. He has to pay the salon's phone bill. He has to pay his water and electricity bill, and believe me, that bill is extremely high, as they have been washing and blow drying people's hair all day long. Don't get confused with assets and expenses. Expenses have no lasting value, but it will cost you. So why do you think that people start their own businesses? There are a lot of reasons, but the main reason is to make a profit. So what exactly is profit? Profit is the money the business makes after all the income has been received and all expenses have been deducted. So our formula will be profit equals income minus expenses. The owner is of course the person who receives all of these profits. However, if the owner is smart, he won't take all of those profits for himself at once. Rather, he'd use a lot of it to expand his business. Cyril is a smart entrepreneur. He used last month's profits to purchase another table, chair, hairdryer, and mirror for his salon. In this way, he can serve more clients at once and therefore make even more profit. The next concept that we are going to discuss is losses. Now, losses are basically the opposite of profit. If the business doesn't make a profit, 
they therefore make a loss. Sometimes they break even. This is when they don't make a profit or a loss. We use the same formula as for profit. Remember, it was profit equals income minus expenses. Now it's losses equals income minus expenses. Losses are of course negative for the business and can cause the business to have cash flow problems and even go bankrupt. So Cyril had a very bad month. His income was only 4,678 Rand and his expenses for the month were 7,899 Rand. Stop this video and let's see who among you can determine what the losses of this month are. Well done, the answer is 3,221 Rand. But unfortunately, this means that Cyril made a loss of 3,221 Rand. Next, we will briefly look at budgets. But remember, we look at this topic in more detail in another lesson. A budget is a list that shows how much money you expect to receive and how much your expenses will be for a specific period. Budgets help businesses and households to plan better for the future, so you can know how much you will spend, save or borrow. So budgets can be simple, like the budget of an individual. They can also be complicated, like the budget of a business or a country. Whether you are going to open up a business one day or not, everyone should know how to draw up a budget so that your family can make better financial planning. This afternoon when you get home, go and ask your parents if they have a monthly budget. And if not, maybe after this series of videos, you can help them to draw up a budget. For the teachers who watch these videos, Capitec has designed an educational board game called Budget Chats. You are welcome to use the link in the description below to order this board game for your learners. We will look further into budgets later in this series, and this board game could be seen as an excellent classroom resource. So hands up, who of you have a piggy bank? Or whose parents have already opened up a savings account for you at the bank? Stop this video and tell your teacher what you think saving is and why it's important to save. So, what does it mean to save? So when you save money, it actually means that you spend less money in order to put money aside for emergencies. Or maybe you want to buy something a little bit bigger later on. Or perhaps to earn interest on your savings and therefore generate more money. So Cyril saved for an entire year so that he could purchase a mobile truck for Cyril Swag Salon. So that he could conveniently cut people's hair at their homes. So next up is banking, and banking is very important for any business. Many people think that banking is just withdrawing and depositing money from the bank, but actually it is way more than that. Banks offer a variety of services to their clients. They grant loans, they create a platform for clients to save money, and they enable people to make payments. Do you know which bank your parents bank with? If you do, raise your hand when the bank appears on the screen. Banking has changed a lot over the years. A few years ago, a person still had to be physically at the bank to be able to make a transaction. Today, thanks to technology and the internet, customers can do banking transactions from anywhere. Here are some examples of various services that banks provide. Firstly, online banking on your laptop or desktop. Secondly, a bank app on your smartphone. Thirdly, mobile banking on your phone. 
and lastly, mobile payments on apps such as Snapscan and Zapper and many more. So we've come to our second last concept, transactions. Transactions take place every day when trade is conducted between businesses and other parties. One party provides goods and services and the other party then pays for those goods and services. When the product or services have been delivered and the client has paid the money over, then the transaction is over. So finally, we've come to our last accounting concept, financial records. Financial records are records of the business's financial transactions. So why is it important for a business to keep records? Businesses are obliged to keep financial records so that the South African Revenue Service, or SARS, can see how much money the business makes so that the business can then in return pay taxes to SARS. By keeping financial records, fraud can be prevented. It is illegal not to keep financial records. So finally, we've come to the end of our first lesson for Term 2. And I know Grade 7s, so this has been a lot to take in, even for me. I look forward to learning even more with you in the next lesson. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.